Hello everybody, it's Michelle Dedman. I just wanted to let you know, I did a very lengthy video for you last night. And what happened is the storage maxed on my computer and so much happened that somehow like I lost the video and it's just a long story, but anyway, it initially loaded. But so if you saw a video and then it vanished, I apologize about that. Um, there was a video and then it was gone. Um, I had to pray into the topic more as well. It's a heavy duty topic and I did make a very long video for you, but the Lord just said, keep praying into it. It's, it's, it's a, it's an intense subject and I need to pray into it more. And so I will revisit when the Lord leads me. So I'm sorry about that. If you saw something and then it was gone. Um, I had issues here and I had to, you know, work on my storage on my computer. The Lord rectified that, but I had to pray into all of it. And so today he just said today, I heard him say, let my people go. And, you know, we are in this time of deliverance and freedom, and we are seeing some advancements happening. As the Lord said, the kingdom is advancing. Um, more people are needing to wake up, as the Lord has been saying. We, too many are asleep. More need to wake up, but we are seeing some advancements happening. Good things have happened. The neat thing is, is... Um, we are making a critical shift to the good. We are we are moving into that place of deliverance. It is a, a very positive thing. Good things are happening, so be excited. He's preparing us. And what he said to me today was the still small voice. I heard him say that if we would just get really quiet and prayerful with him and to be able to hear his voice, then we will not follow a stranger's voice. And that is the biggest topic right now is... Um, the still small voice so we'd have be able to hear him because if we hear him clearly then we can we can obey um his voice and and that's how we will be fruitful in this hour so sometimes um we just need to get quiet and still to do that and he wanted me to share how to be led by the spirit and the first thing he's telling me is get quiet because the noise is too much you know with so much noise we can't really hear him so the first thing is just to kind of get quiet and be still and be ready to receive. Be expectant that you're going to hear from him. You know, the, my sheep know my voice, the Bible says. So be expectant you're going to hear from him and be expectant that he's going to begin to lead gently. He will, he will gently lead you to that still water he's telling me to tell you. But just slow down a little bit. We, sometimes we have to slow down a little to hear him and get quiet and let him begin to speak. So I'm praying for that right now for everybody, that they would begin to have their ears open, their eyes open and begin to see more in the spirit. You know, a lot of the seers are being called right now, but we'd be able to hear more in the spirit. But he is saying right now, let my people go. So I, what I wanted to share is how, how to be led by the spirit. To know the mind of God, we must be free from our own mind. He literally has to think through us. In order to get the mind of God, we must get our thoughts off of everything else that would influence, and that could be conditions or advice from others, opinions, impressions, inclinations, desires, feelings. We lay these down so that we can get still. And that stillness before God and let him speak to us and he will give us a conviction in that speaking we, but we have to be very wary if we get super strong impressions they may be from God but when we have them we should stand still get still before God empty out before him to get his mind and if the impression is from God then it will deepen and strengthen and grow into a clear, steady, unmistakable conviction. With such a leading, one can stand fast in the face of all the opposition. But we must stand fast. To deny a leading, falter, waver, or question after having seen a thing clearly and it is serving, serves to throw us into confusion and doubt that hinders from getting God's will next time he will not waste that blessing if we receive a clear leading from him he will give us 
he will have us obey him or he will not give them. It does take great patience. God isn't in a hurry. Eternity's years are his and he will not let us hurry him. The very first requisite for getting his voice is to get quiet, to be patient. All restlessness, anxiety, haste, uneasiness will stand in the way. God moves in a great calm. He doesn't speak to the inner ear of man by these whirlwinds and earthquakes, but he has messages in these. But to the child of God, he will speak gently in a still, small voice. And there must be stillness, stillness of the soul to meet him and hear that voice. And there must be faithfulness and obedient faithfulness to get still and stand still until God does speak. Our God is a jealous God. And if we don't give him all of our obedience, he will not give us of a priceless, the deeper treasures that come to a perfectly surrendered life. And if there's an inclination on our part to run away from his presence and we get weary of waiting for his voice, he could, he could withhold that blessing. Or rather, it is only by that patience and by that waiting that our spirit gets in touch with God that unites the inner ear to his voice. God moves in these great harmonies and this stillness and waiting and patience and the submission tuned to every discordant chord of our being into harmony with his. And he touches us with his finger. He whispers to us from his divine knowledge. The tuned chords respond and we have his mind in us. Sometimes in so waiting upon God, perhaps for days for some clear leading as to our path of duty, we are confused by the many impressions we receive, even by doors that might open in such an unexpected manner, we take them to be of God. But this is our testing. Satan is always busy seeking whom he may devour and never more perhaps so when a child of God is at the feet of Jesus asking for direction. God never works aimlessly and Satan knows no matter how simple or personal a matter is. God's decision will be one that will hurt the kingdom of darkness. To deflect the child of God by any possible means from entering upon that path, that's Satan's aim. And knowing he cannot tempt to disobedience, he will, if possible, he will come as an angel of light, drawing the child of God by deceptive leadings or impressions or conditions into the wrong paths. God high over all permits this testing in his great eternal calm and just feel that stillness. I'm feeling him in that stillness right now as I'm sharing this with you. The great eternal calm, be still and know that I'm God. He looking at that troubled soul sees further than the present emergency. He knows if he is too merciful, it will never learn the lesson of hearing his voice, that the battle will strengthen, not weaken. And even if there should be failure and temporary victory on the part of Satan, experience painful though it may be, will be the teacher to bring that impatient soul to a better understanding of God's dealings with his children the lesson once learned, then God has an instrument in his hand to whom he can communicate his will to be worked out in the obedience of an absolutely yielded human will. Oh, better to stand the testings and suffer the failure, even than to give up and stand on the lower plane of a servant, walking in ignorance. As his friends, we have a right to know what he doeth, and only do it to his friends, those who are in intimate, personal relation to himself, can he give this knowledge. So praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the strength to overcome by the blood of the Lamb in this hour. Let no weapon formed against us prosper in the name of Jesus. Be still. Help us, Lord. Be still. You are taking us by still waters in a calm place. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that we shall resurrect from these difficult places. 
And we ask, Lord, for your will in, in these circumstances, that it be not by my will, but your will be done. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Humble us, Lord, through the storm, that we would see with meekness and a childlike way. Like little children, we just come into your lap and you protect us in the storm. We thank you, God, for your glory and what you're doing in the earth right now. We pray, Lord, for the exposure coming. And we pray Daniel 2, 222. That you are revealing hidden things. Thank you for your mercy, God, and thank you for your love. Let no weapon formed against us prosper. In the name of Jesus, we close every spiritual door that is not of you. And we ask you, Lord, for the wisdom that we need in this hour. The wisdom to navigate what you're asking of us, God. I thank you, Jesus, and we praise your holy name. Amen this day. Take care. Many blessings and love to you. Amen.